Morning, ladies and gentlemen, Bertha Warrior here, trusting that you are doing well, my sister, my brother. So I'm out on an errand, so I got to keep my word. So I decided to come here, and um, we're going to go talk about today, uh, not guided by emotions. And I'm in, He Shall Receive Power, My Devotion, by Ellen G. White. So how are you doing today? Happy Preparation Day. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. It was raining earlier, and now the sun seems to want to come out, but at the same token, it looks like it wants to rain again. So it's still a beautiful day in the neighborhood. How is it in your neighborhood, my sister, my brother? Hope you are doing well. Trusting that you are doing well. So I'm not going to go ahead and keep you, so let's get into this topic today. So we're going to go ahead and have a word of prayer. And uh, our scripture is uh, Psalms 119, verses 105. And so let's go ahead and pray. Father God, I thank you for this day, Father God. I thank you, thank you, thank you, Father God. Father God, you state in your word, in your word that thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Father, we ask you, Father God, that you will continue to guide us today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So let's get into not guided by emotions. We know today a lot of people are just, I got this, got this emotional stuff going on, and they could say whatever they want to say and do whatever they want to say. But we are here as Christian, Bible-believing, Bible-believing Christians. We are not supposed to be guided by our emotions. And the state, sanctification is not a happy flight of feeling, not the work of an instant, but the work of a lifetime. It says, if someone claims that the Lord has sanctified him and made him holy, the proof of his claim is to the blessings will be seen in the fruits of meekness, patience, long-suffering, truthfulness, and love. If the blessing that those who claim to be sanctified have received, let them to rely upon some particular emotions, and they declare that there is no need of searching the scriptures that they may know God's revealed will, then the supposed blessing is a counterfeit, for it leads its possessors to, pl to place value on their own unsanctified emotions and fantasies and to the close and to close their ears to the voice of God in his words. Why need those who claim they have been special manifestation of the Spirit and the witness that their sins are all forgiven concludes that they can lay the Bible aside from henceforth walk alone? When we ask those who claim to have been instantaneously sanctified, if they are searching the scriptures as Jesus told them to do, to see if there is an additional truth for them to accept, they answer. God made known his will to us directly in special signs and revelations, and we can afford to lay the Bible aside. Mm. It says there are thousands who are being deceived by trusting to some special emotions and discarding the word of God. They are not building upon the only safe and sure foundation, the word of God. A religion that is addressed to intelligence creatures will produce reasonable evidence of the genuineness for they will be marked results in hearts and character. The grace of Christ will be made manifest in their daily conduct. Let me repeat this. The grace of Christ will be made manifest in their daily conduct. We may safely ask those who profess to be sanctified do the fruits of the Spirit appear in your life? Do you manifest the meekness and the lowliness of Christ and reveal the fact that you are learning daily in the school of Christ, sharpening your life after the pattern of his unselfish life? The best evidence that any of us can have of our connection with God of heaven is that we keep his commandments. Mm, let me repeat it to those in the back of the, I would say back of the room, 
Let me repeat those to those in the middle of the room. And we can't forget those that outside the room and those that's in the front of the room. So let me repeat that. Let me repeat that. It states, the best evidence that any of us can have of our connection with God of heaven is that we keep his commandments. And we're talking about all the Decalogues, meaning all of the Ten Commandments of God. It says the best proof of the faith in Christ is distrust of self and dependence upon God. The only reliable proof of our abiding in Christ is to reflect his image. Let me repeat. The only reliable proof of our abiding in Christ is to reflect his image. Just so far as we do this, we give evidence that we are sanctified through the truth, for the truth is exemplified in our daily lives. So that concludes my devotion, my sister, my brother, not guided by emotions. So let's go ahead and bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you for this message today, Father God, that we should not be guided by our emotion, Father God. Lord, we ask you that you will help us to keep all of your commandments. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God is good. God is good. Let us continue to give him all the praise, the honor, and glory, my sister, my brother. So if you have received a benefit, a benefit from this uh, message today can you do me a favor can you hit the like hit the share hit, make a comment then you can follow me over youtube under Burdell warrior while you're there hit the subscribe button hit the bell notification so when my videos goes up you'll be the first to be notified and for those of you that would like a copy of my book and those of you that have purchased my book thank you thank you thank you thank you so much but if you would like a copy of my book you can go my books i say you can go to bit.ly backslash spiritual warfare 21 Book number two is bit.ly backslash 15 compelling reasons 2022. Okay. So thank you so much, my sister and brother. And so may God continue to reach the best you and your family. But before you go, but before you go, um, let us go ahead and do the four hugs for survival. Four, four. Remember, we talked about eight is for growth. Twelve. 12 is for sub 12 is for growth. So we got four for survival, eight for maintenance, and then 12 was for growth, right? But we're only going to do the four. So here we go. One, two, three, and four. Thank you, my sister and brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we know that the Sabbath, according to Exodus 20, verse 8 to 11, says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And we know according to the Bible, we talk about the Bible now, the Sabbath always and forever will be from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. It's a 24-hour cycle. And the Sabbath was created at creation. So it was not no Jews back then. Got people always say, oh, it was for the Jews. No, 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 no. It's for all of God's creation is to be worshiping on the Sabbath. And we know, according to Exodus 20, verse 8, that is always, forever, forever will be on Saturday. It was never Sunday. So you can go ahead and do your own research and see who changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. And then you will know that that is a system that Satan is using to do his bidding. Because remember, we only have two options. You're either going to be uh, following God on God's side, or you're going to be on Satan's side. There's no middle ground. You can't, hey, Burdell, I'm just sitting here. I don't know which, which side to take. You know what? I'm just sitting here. Well, you already made that decision, my sister, rather for the dark side. Because as God's people, we always have to be thinking people, thinking and studying, studying his word. And God says, if you love me, keep my commandments. So there's no way that you could be sitting on the fence. I don't know which side there is. And especially since if you go out into the world today, you can see all the evidence that darkness is increasing. And the Bible states that wickedness will increase in the land. And it's going to get, it's going to intensify until Jesus return, my sister and brother. So fasten your seatbelt. Fasten your seatbelt, my sister and brother. So if you're not in the word praying, I'm
thing like you never have before my sister and brother you're going to miss it because we have to be on guard at all time because there's so much stuff coming at us as believers as believers so we got to make sure that we're standing on the promises of the word of god so with that my sister and brother i have a super awesome day have a happy be Sabbath, whatever you decide to do, whether you're going to church or you're going to have your family and having a, a church at home or whatever. Have a happy Sabbath. And my sister and brother, I love you. I love you. I appreciate you. Until Monday, be blessed and take care.